So in this video, I'll teach you how to turn your own personal clay body into a slip casting clay body. Before we get to some live demonstrations, there's some important information you need to understand first. So the main reason I like to turn my hand-built clay body into a slip cast body is when I wanna combine slip elements into the hand-built piece of artwork while it's still wet. So it's important that they're made out of the same clay body so that they shrink uniformly and don't crack. So for this piece, I hand-built the bathtub and then I needed to make legs for it. So for me, it was a lot easier just to carve one of these legs, make a mold out of it, and then slip cast it four times. I could have um, carved four of these individually, but that would take a lot longer. And so now since I have the slip cast piece, I can attach them both while they're still wet. And since they're made from the same clay body, they will shrink uniformly and they won't crack. So in order to do this, I need to turn, turn my casting, my clay body into a casting body. So before I get into the how-to portion, it is essential that you understand a few things about the chemistry of clay, because what works for my clay body won't be the exact same that works for yours. Plus, not all clay bodies can be turned into casting bodies, and some work better than others. So even if you were to be using my exact same clay body, the electrolytes in your water will probably be different than in mine. There may also be some slight variations in your chemicals, which would require some fine tuning on your part. So this is why it's not as simple as just following a recipe. You'll find some good slip casting recipes out there, but they too will need to be fine tuned and calibrated in order to work properly. So this video will introduce you to that process. So when I'm, what I'm about to teach you is not overly complex or difficult, but it will probably take you anywhere from one to three weeks as you work on your slip a little bit every day or every other day or every few days. In this video, I'm keeping it fairly simple for those of you who are just getting started with turning your own clay body into a casting body. And it's also for those of you who have done this before and have found it confusing and frustrating. I will explain it in terms that are easy to understand in ways that you should be able to quickly use in your studio. And if you want to dive a little deeper, I've linked to some articles below. So you'll need some equipment, but it's minimal and inexpensive, and some of it you are likely to already own. Okay, this is the basic chemistry of clay that you need to understand. This is what a clay particle looks like. Um, clay particles are flat, wide, and thin, similar to a deck of playing cards. They're shaped like hexagons, and with a little water, their magnetic charge is activated. So that's pretty cool. Clay particles are basically little mini magnets. One side of the clay particle is composed of alumina, which has a positive charge, and the opposite, opposite side is silica, which has a negative charge. So minimal water is necessary to encourage the particles to orient themselves. The negative sides of the particle finds and attracts itself to the positive side of another clay particle, and so on, thus stacking together. Here's what clay looks like underneath an electron microscope. You can see that the particles are actually stacking together due to their magnetic charge. The charge is what makes the clay body plastic or flexible. Minimal water activates your charge as they attract to their opposite sides and stack together. So that's why when you move a clay particle around, um, it stays where you put it because it's magnetically charged. So the natural inclination to make a slip runny enough to pour it into your molds is to simply add a bunch of water until it's the desired consistency. Wrong. The one thing you do not want to do in order to turn your clay body into casting body is simply do the same thing that you do when you make your joinery slip. You know, your joinery slip is the slip that you use as a glue when you score and slip two pieces of wet clay together. So when making casting slip, you do not want to just add a bunch of water to your clay. The slip casting body is much different than your joinery slip due to the molecular structure. So if you simply just water down your clay to turn it into a casting slip, the water does indeed temporarily separate the clay particles and they will bounce around and off each other. But before too long, gravity takes over as does their magnetic charge. The heavy clay particles will settle to the bottom and as all of the settling happens, the clay magnets find their opposites and stack together form forming clumps. Eventually you would be left with a whole bunch of clay at the bottom of your bucket and water at the top. So if you try to slip cast with this material right after you mix it, you'll still run into a lot of problems due to the high water content. So for one, um, your, all the water in the slip would quickly waterlog your mold. 
and you would not be able to develop a very thick wall um, or it would take a very long time to develop a thick thick enough wall. So I go deeper into this aspect of how molds work in my slip casting video. In addition, because there's so much water, the clay, the clay wear would shrink way too much, resulting in cracking of the wear, which would likely happen while it's still in the mold once the slip is poured out. So first you pour the slip in, after it sits there a while, you pour it out. And then as the piece is drying inside your mold, your mold due to the high water content, it's gonna shrink a whole bunch and it's probably gonna crack while it's still in the mold before you even get a chance to get it out. And if you are able to get it out um, before it cracks a whole bunch, your wear is likely to be weak and brittle. So furthermore, due to all of the settling and, and stacking up of the clay particles, the slip would cast thicker on the bottom and thinner on the top as those heavy particles settle at the bottom and the smaller and lighter ones um, settle at the top. Finally, all this water is gonna quickly break down your mold and so it's not gonna last very long. What is one to do if you can't just water down your slip to make casting slip? Well, the answer is deflocculation. And you say, whoa, what is deflocculation? Well, I like to think about clay particles similar to the way I think about a flock of birds. They all like to flock together. So clay particles and birds flock together. And so in order to deflock them, you need to add a deflocculant. Deflocculants come in the form of sodium silicate, Darwin number seven, and soda ash. Um, they are very powerful agents and you only need a small amount. It's also important to know that all deflocculants are water soluble meaning they will all evaporate with your water. So as you use deflocculated slip while slip casting, know that some of the deflocculant will evaporate with the water from your mixture, which means you will need to periodically recalibrate your slip, figuring out if it needs to be thinned with water or thinned with deflocculant, especially if you're going to reclaim your cast offs from slip casting. So this video will help you figure this out. For this video, I will be using sodium silicate alone. When you add deflocculant to your slip, it changes every clay particle to be positively charged on both sides. Now all the particles repel each other. This is what makes the slip flow with literally half the water it would normally take. But before you even think about deflocculation, the first and most important thing you need to do is to measure the specific gravity of your slip. Otherwise your slip can easily contain too much water and be miserable to work with. Specific gravity tells you if you have too much water or not enough water in your casting slip. Quite frankly, having too much water is probably the biggest and easiest mistake to make. And now that you know how bad it is to have too much water, you need to have a way to measure how much water versus how much clay is in your casting slip to avoid this miserable situation. Fortunately, there's an easy process to measure your gravity, which I will show you. So to reiterate, since this is so important, the specific gravity tells you how much clay you have in relationship to how much water. And since you now know how bad it is to have too much water, you now know how important it is to measure the specific gravity. So in this picture, you can see this is all, both of these are deflocculated slips. Um, this slip has high gravity. You know, and so you can think about this as it's got a lot of clay particles versus how little water it has. And because it has so many clay particles in here, it's really heavy. So it's said to have high gravity versus this slip, which is also deflocculated, has low gravity. And so it doesn't have very many clay particles compared to how much water. It's got way more water. And so this is light. You can see how this would, these clay particles make it really light since there's not a lot. And so this is said to have low gravity. Okay, so now that you understand the basic principles of clay, watch this next video, part two, where I walk you through the entire process of how to turn your own clay body into a slip casting body.